This is Judith Lay welcoming you to Manx Radio and to the podcast of this week's edition of At Your Service. Manx Radio To the future. That's the theme of our programme today as we complete our coverage of the official opening of the Salvation Army Church and Community Centre in Balakotia Crescent in Braddon, a new building designed to serve the needs of the Salvation Army now and well into the future, a place of worship and a base for outreach, the community projects that the Army offers to the whole island. Last week, we heard from Commissioners Paul and Janine Main, the territorial commanders or leaders of the Salvation Army in the UK, Ireland and the Isle of Man. And they played a key part in the official opening ceremony and the time of worship that followed it. Today, we move to the second part of the celebrations. Worship last Sunday morning, which was led by Captain Rachel Nevote and Major David Taylor. Captain Rachel and her husband Dylan are officers leading the Salvation Army on the island and Major David Taylor is divisional leader with responsibility for the work of the Salvation Army in the whole of the north of England, including the Isle of Man. So he's been very closely involved every step of the way through the new building project. And a little later in the programme, Major David will share some thoughts about his own ministry. But first, some words and music from the time of worship in the new building last Sunday morning. Good morning everyone. Welcome to the Salvation Army, welcome to the House of the Lord and to our special weekend as we continue to celebrate the the official opening of uh, this lovely new church and community centre. We have our divisional commander, divisional leader, Major David Taylor with us this morning and so we welcome David. We're grateful that you're here. I'm very grateful that he's here. He'll be uh, leading the message later this morning. Welcome to all our other visitors. It's lovely to see you all here joining us and celebrating with us. You're very welcome. It's a time to celebrate, but we're here, aren't we, to praise God and to worship him. And so just centre our hearts and our minds on God this morning as we come into his presence, into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and take a moment to set aside all of the things that you've been doing this morning and come into God's presence. God is with us this morning. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. Let's use these words to help us to draw near to God in prayer this morning.
No work too hard for him. In faith, receive from him this morning. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we give you grateful thanks. You are a great God. You are a living God. And you are good. Thank you this morning for your great love, your mercy, your forgiveness, your calling on us to know you and to follow you. The grace you give us, your presence to strengthen us, encourage us, lift us up again when we fall. Father, thank you for the giving of this building through the generosity of those who have gone before, through the hard work of those who are here together this morning. We thank you for this base and its opportunity to be a place of welcome, of hospitality. We wait on you. We ask you to speak to us afresh today. And may we capture, see more clearly your word for us, your direction for us, your accompaniment of us. Father, hear our prayer. We ask these things in your name. Amen. We're going to invite Phil to come share the Lord's Prayer with us. We're going to acknowledge this prayer in Manx as he speaks it for us. The Lord's Prayer. As we lead Shannon's Muliak, a glivra Shane Vialk, son Liats, a Ririak, as a Fua, as a Glua, son de Brack, as de Brack. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Phil. That was lovely. Thank you. This is a new beginning. It's a new beginning. I know you've been in the building for a few months now, but uh, symbolically, we acknowledge the place that we have here to serve the whole Isle of Man. Wherever people are and live, we are the Salvation Army, the Isle of Man Corps. May God be with you and bless you as you move forward from this day and as you serve this Isle of Man in the love of God and the grace of God as the Isle of Man Corps. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to invite the songsters to come and minister to us just now. And uh, we're singing a song that is so apt for today. It's entitled A New Journey. And so I encourage you to get immersed in the music of this lovely song as we look forward to a new journey as God's people into the future.
few songs to this. A new journey. And we acknowledge that we've been on a journey, haven't we, as a core? We've travelled a long way together and with God. And uh, we've got a journey ahead of us and we're excited. Well, I'm excited. I hope you're excited where God is going to take us. Oh, it's so exciting to see, you know, hopes and dreams fulfilled. It's been a long journey for the Salvationists here on the Isle of Man. You know, they moved out of their building in Lord Street in 2017. So we're, we're seven years on in that journey. And uh, it's great to see it fulfilled. There have been different emotions when we, when we thought that the Citadel in Lord Street could be renovated and, and restored and when that wasn't possible, it wasn't economic to be done. Then you've got to lead people to another place and that's, that can be sometimes a difficult thing to do, can't it? Absolutely, it can. There was, there was a lot of disappointment, understandably, people feeling deflated, wondering what the future holds. But, uh, you know, we believe that uh, we're, we're here to serve God and, you know, we, we put this, these things in his hands and we trust that a, a, a new plan will emerge and thankfully it has. Now we're here on the Isle of Man and often you know, we say that island life is very different and it is, there are certain things that, that make it unique. You look at the whole of the northwest of which the Isle of Man is just a part, do you find huge differences in the army as you go around the area or do you find strong similarities? I think there's quite a lot of difference. It's uh, it's quite a diverse region. You think of, you know, Cumbria with its uh, very rural and uh, small towns and then you think of Greater Manchester with its urban sprawl and, and Merseyside and, and then we also cover Cheshire. And and I live in, in Lancashire. I live in Preston at the moment. But the Salvation Army develops really with the people who who locally take ownership of it and because we all come with our own strengths and and gifts and skills we see we see different expressions emerging but around a unified sense that we are the salvation army we have very clear uh, mission and purpose and uh, that is a strong uniting factor what was the point when you said this is what i want to do this is how i want to dedicate my life how did that come about for you well, it's, it's been a journey. So my parents, as it, as it happens, were Salvation Army officers. They felt God calling them to go to Africa. My dad was a teacher and he went as an officer to train teachers in Zimbabwe. I was born there and saw the, the work that was being accomplished in, in that place. And I think that gave me a very early sense that there, was, there were good things to do in God's mission. So after university, starting to think about where the future lay, I sense that God was saying, you know, David, this is for you as well. So I'm just, f will have completed 40 years this, uh, this May as an officer. So it's been a wonderful journey and a real privilege. And I've seen so many different places. I always say to people, I've never been bored. I've, I've never, you know, it's been always so fulfilling and a sense of you never know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I can believe. <laughs> the wisdom that you must have acquired over that time, you know, from starting off learning from your parents and then all the things that you learn for yourself. You know, the wisdom that you bring. And we, we can't put a, put a price on this, that when we talk to people who have been in the ministry for a long time, there is nothing in college that ever prepares you like experience, is there? It, absolutely. Um, 40 years uh, it's been a joy it's been challenges uh, there's been ups and downs you, you you know you're human you make mistakes you learn and of course you you gain new insights and I think there is a wisdom that inevitably comes if you if you keep learning and keep embracing the fact that you need to to adopt new understandings and and always open to the new things that you learn God is faithful I proved that and um, I have a, a deep sense that God is with me. And, you know, I, of course, challenging situations come. But my experience has been that uh, God is sufficient. He, he has all the resources available. And if you just trust him, he brings you through. So I've learned to be resilient and I've learned that, that God is faithful and he, he can be trusted.
words there from Major David Taylor, divisional leader with responsibility for the work of the Salvation Army in the north of England, including the Isle of Man. A number of officers who'd served on the island over the years came back to share in the celebration weekend, and it was good to catch up with folk who developed their faith at the Salvation Army in Douglas, but who have now taken on leadership roles with the Salvation Army across. Captain Canon Hilary Borthwick works in Cumbria and is an ecumenical canon of Carlisle Cathedral, a sign of the strong ecumenical links between all the Christian denominations in that area. And husband and wife, Gay and Andy Tonks, are territorial envoys, a title I'd not heard before. So we're Salvation Army officers that have not been to the training college. Um, We train on the job, basically. So we've been doing that for 13 years now. (laughs) In some ways, there is nothing equips you better for any kind of ministry than experience, is there? That's right, yeah. So learning on the job was the best thing, I think, really. It uh, keeps you on your toes. So whereabouts are you based now? Uh, we're based in Chester, a beautiful city. What, what kind of work are you doing, Andy? We've been there since July, so we're just trying to get into the community and get to know what the needs are. We've started a, like a, a drop-in. Anyone's just welcome to come in, have a cup of tea, have a soup and a sandwich, and just sit and chat together. We're very fortunate that in next, right next door to the Salvation Army in Chester, there's a project which is called Spider Project. It's a place where people can go, and it's open every single day of the year, including Christmas. So in a way, they... Um, They lead the way for us a little bit, but we have managed to work with them a little bit as well. They're a crisis centre, really, for people with mental health issues, Um, but because their door's always open, they get all sorts of people. So that's that's been a joy to sort of have them pass people to us that they feel are not, you know, within their their remit of what they do so um, it's very slow at the moment because our doors in the week have been closed for a long time and so since last July we're just trying to let people know that our doors are open and that we're there for them. Every journey that involves people is a gradual one and gaining people's trust isn't it Hilary? Yes I've been in Kendall now for seven years and it does take a while to actually become part of the community. I've been in Millam for five years now and it, it does take a little while before people will actually trust you and let you journey alongside them. Until they know how much you care, they, they won't trust you with the important stuff, the life issues. Now, I have the privilege of remembering the three of you when you were here on the island. How are you feeling now today? Because we're talking about the days of the Lord Street Citadel. We don't want to look back. We're looking forward. But at the same time, something like this is very nostalgic, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really impressive hall. And uh, it's the future, isn't it? It's the way forward. As you say, not to look back too much, respect the past, but uh, move on. It was quite strange, really, because um, we were at the reopening, of course, of Lord Street when that happened back in the 80s. So obviously some memories there and looking around and seeing some of the people we shared, but also remembering some of the people that have gone to glory that um, even in these last few years have not entered into this new building with the people and yet would have been behind much of the work that went on. So honouring them and the best way to honour the past and the best way to honour the people who have given is to go into the future and keep it going. Now, Hilary, you you do come back to the island whenever you possibly can, as indeed do Gay and Andy. So you, to some extent, have seen this as it's been taking shape. I saw you singing there with the songsters. It was nice to see you part of that again. It's lovely to see it all come to fruition. I've been back sort of over the years since Lord Street closed and we've been in the different buildings, but it hasn't, of course, been a permanent home and it's hard. We've done a time of wandering as exiles a little bit. So it's so lovely now to see the core established here today it's renamed as the Isle of Man quite rightly because it is the core for the whole island it's not just Douglas Citadel and it's just nice to see that I mean this building is just a springboard to go forward and my thanks to Captain Canon Hilary Borthwick and Territorial Envoys Gay and Andy Tonks and that's where we'll leave the new Salvation Army Church and Community Centre in Balakotia Crescent on the Isle of Man Business Park in Braddon. And my thanks to Captains Dylan and Rachel for their warm welcome and their help in making the recordings for this programme. And now let's finish with our usual look at our notice board. And tonight the Mariners Choir will be in Bride Methodist Church for a service starting at half past six, at which Reverend Brian Yardy will preach. And as usual, this will be followed by supper and community hymn singing. 
Also this evening at half past six, there's a special Songs of Praise in St Luke's Church in Baldwin when the life of Thomas Cowell, MBE, will be remembered, following Tom's death earlier this month. This will be a chance to remember him in a church that was so dear to him and such an important part of his life. It's hoped that as many as possible will gather to enjoy this Songs of Praise service in St Luke's Church in Baldwin tonight at half past six. Tomorrow, Bank Holiday Monday, there's a Bank Holiday Fete open from noon until 4pm, organised by Onken Methodist Church. Free admission, everyone welcome, there will be something for all ages and it'll be opened by His Excellency the Lieutenant Governor, Sir John Lorimer and Lady Lorimer. There'll be craft stalls, barbecue and Onken Silver Band and much more. Also, on Bank Holiday Monday, there's the annual May Day Collectors' Fair from noon until 5pm in Dolby School Rooms. There'll be a wide range of stalls from various collectors, along with homemade soup and sandwiches, cake and coffee and afternoon teas available throughout the day. There'll also be a cake stall, a plant stall and the basement bric-a-brac bonanza. No booking needed, just drop by any time between noon and five o'clock tomorrow for a good skeet. And this, of course, is another charity event supporting St James's chosen charities for this year. And it's Super Monday in the lounge at Colby Methodist Church tomorrow between noon and half past one. Pop in for homemade soup with fresh bread, followed by tea or coffee, all free of charge. On Tuesday, the 7th, there's a coffee morning in Balafessen Methodist Chapel in Port Erin, between 10 and half past 11. Also on Tuesday, the 7th, there's another community film night in Castletown Methodist Church. It's open from 7 o'clock, refreshments will be available, and it's all free of charge. Although if you'd like to make a donation to church funds, that'd be most welcome. Looking ahead to next weekend, there's the annual Cool Plant Sale next Saturday, the 11th, from 2 until half past 4 in the Cool Hall above the Isle of Man Business Park. There'll be lots of bedding plants, cakes and bric-a-brac as well. Admission is £5, which includes an afternoon tea. Also next Saturday the 11th, it's the Arbury Church Spring Fair, open from 2 until 4pm in Arbury Parish Hall in Ballabeg. Admission is just £3, which includes a warm welcome from Vicar Reverend Simon and strawberry and cream scones. Lots of stalls to browse around and a chance to walk around the lovely gardens at Parville. And I'm afraid that's all that we've got time for now. But I'll be back later in our virtual lounge tonight from 9 o'clock onwards, when the first couple of hours of the programme will be my final broadcast from this year's Manx Music Festival including lots of lovely choir music from the final two days of the Guild. And that'll be followed by a couple of hours of easy listening music to round off your Sunday and ease you into your bank holiday Monday. And I'd love you to join me if you can. So until whenever we meet again, this is Judith saying thank you for listening and I wish you and those you love a blessed and peaceful week and a very good morning. (laughs) 